Hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today. I'm Amber from Small Business Britain. I'm really excited because we're talking about all things PR, what it is and how to get started. Um, we've got the amazing Fiona Minute with us today. Um, she's a PR coach and she's the founder of Boss Your PR. We've run a couple of sessions with Fiona before and you guys absolutely loved it. So we wanted to bring it back for you. Um, today, we're going to be talking about how the media works, opportunities it presents and the power of great press coverage. Um, the incredible potential that lies in traditional media um, and how to get out of your comfort zone. We're going to be talking about loads of great tips and tricks today. So I'm really excited to hear from Fiona. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to BT for partnering with us on these sessions. Um, it's a part of our BT Skills for Tomorrow program. And we've been running it for, I think, three, four years now. So we've got lots and lots of great content. It's all on the Small Business Britain Facebook page. Um, you can also head over to the Skills for Tomorrow website from BT. Um, as you would have joined, we are recording so don't worry if you miss out on anything we'll send it to your email box um, along with any resources that are mentioned today um, please get involved in the chat box say hello uh, let us know your business I know Fiona's got a few interactive parts for you and a few questions as well so please do get involved in that if you've got any questions put them into the Q&A section um, we'll ask Fiona all of your questions at the end cool Fiona I'm going to hand over to you I'll be back at the end Magic. Thank you so much, Amber. Um, brilliant. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I'm so excited. I'm always excited when I get the chance to, to share anything about PR and how, how amazing it is. So really, really excited for this session. Um, as Amber said, we'd love to hear from you. Please do um, let us know who you are, what your business is, and where you're joining us from. So there's already over 50 of you on the session. So get involved in the chat. What I want to do through the session is just throw out a few questions to you, get you thinking about how this kind of stuff might apply to you how you might want to put it into practice and really just try and make it as interactive as possible so that you get the most out of this session okay so get those intros coming through if you can um so we are brilliant uh tammy emma sarah yes love it borada good stuff um brilliant keep those coming through thank you thank you it's nice to sort of be able to to know who i'm talking to um, right, so PR, what is it and how do we get started? So in this session, I want to just give you kind of broad strokes, some intro points, open up what PR is and actually really hopefully show you how accessible it is. There's a lot of preconceptions and myths around PR. So hopefully we'll bust a few of those myths as we go. Oh, lovely Kate Cadbury. Hi, Kate. Marianne. Awesome. Love it. Brilliant. Right. So let us get moving. Hopefully the slides all work, fingers crossed. Um, so briefly, who am I? I'm Fiona Minette. I am the founder of Bossy PR and the PR Spotlight. I am an award-winning PR expert, PR coach, and I'm on a mission. It is my life's goal to democratise PR for entrepreneurs, for small businesses, make it truly, truly accessible as I believe it should be. It should not be out of reach for any business of any size, okay? So I've been in PR for about 15 years. I spent six years running my own PR agency. And now primarily I teach people how to make the most of, of effective DIY PR techniques. Um, I do one-to-one -one coaching, I do PR and media training, deliver online courses, and I work with the likes of BBC Studios, Domestica, Enterprise Nation, Small Business Britain, and many, many more to deliver PR training, PR content. Um, Jason, oh, brilliant. We met at Downing Street, epic. Um, super, keep those intros coming. So let's get started, guys. OK, so let's look at what PR is in the chat. Um, you know, maybe there's some words, maybe there's connotations, maybe there's things that you think of when I mention PR. What do you think it is? And typically we'll get a lot of sort of our fab, you know, oh, sweetie darling, crack open the bolly. Um, it's kind of those vibes that, that, that people tend to go to when you mention PR. Or maybe, you know, some of the sort of negative political connotations, you know, the kind of spin doctor element and, you know, fake news might be might be something that, that kind of plays into it. So what are your sort of key words relating to, to PR? So we've got marketing, we've got brand awareness. Yes, spot on. Public relations, interacting with your target market, building a brand, marketing and promotion of your businesses, your products, your services to increase sales. Brilliant. I mean, those are all so spot on. And actually you're kind of already starting to sum up PR for me, do my job for me guys. So what is PR? Sometimes the nicest or kind of easiest way to sort of hook into explaining it 
is to put it into context with advertising. OK, so advertising is you saying you're good. You are paying for that advert. You are curating that advert. You are placing it where you want it to speak to the audience that you want to reach. PR is getting someone else to say you're good. PR is really leveraging the power of referral, recommendation, endorsement that kind of holds a lot more sway with an audience. So if, um, you know, if there's a magazine that you like to read or a website that you like to visit, how often will you linger on the advertising? I know for me, if I pick up a glossy magazine, I'm like, right, there's the chunk of advertising at the beginning before I even get to the good stuff. I don't need to look at that. I want to read the good stuff. We go to the features, the editorial content, the interviews, the Q&As, the product roundups. We go to the editorial good stuff in a magazine or on an online platform, and that is the PR. That is brands placing in those spaces where the journalist is endorsing them. The journalist and the title are recommending them to their readership, to their audience. That holds a huge amount more sway than placing an advert. And actually, you get a lot more bang for your buck. Um, but we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. So hopefully we're kind of starting to think about what PR is and how it might start to benefit us. So in the most simple terms, PR stands for public relations as one of the common comments mentioned. And this simply means communication, okay? This is all about how you communicate with your audience, with those around you, with those connected to your business in some way. So communication with all stakeholders, customers, suppliers, stockists, employees, followers, peers, people that you network with. This all falls under your communications remit, okay? And within PR, you've got a level of internal communications, which might be with your suppliers, with employees, and you've got your external communications, which is with your customers, with your other stakeholders, with any other people with any interest in your business, okay? So PR covers all of that. So actually, in this sense, you are probably already doing an element of your own PR. If you are speaking to your audience, if you are on social media, for example, if you are email marketing, you're already doing your own PR because you are putting your product, your business out there to your target audience and you are looking to generate interest. You are communicating with them. So let's talk benefits of PR. OK, now, again, in the chat, you're, you're lively in the chat. I'm loving it. Please do let me share which of these benefits feels like a winner for you okay what would get you jumping into PR you know which of these stands out as something that you really really want to achieve with with something like PR so what are the benefits first up you are able to really hone curate and then communicate your message whatever that is your your messaging your key points your value your mission being able to Hone and then articulate that is a really, really great benefit of PR and actually working through the process where, you know, we, we, we would go more in depth than we're able to in a session like this. But when you start getting into what is your story, what is your why, what is your purpose, what is your mission and really honing that into what do I then want to articulate? It can be a really sort of powerful, transformative um, kind of part of the journey that actually benefits you far beyond your, your PR and your, your messaging in that respect and actually kind of gets to the core of what you what you exist to achieve as a business. So messaging is, is really, really important. And then number two, audience reach. OK, yes, we do our best through social media, but actually what if we could be reaching a much larger audience? So typically, uh, let's say the audience reach of a monthly women's lifestyle magazine might be sort of 200, 300, 400,000. 400,000 pairs of eyes on your content, potentially. If you get sort of online, uh, if you get into kind of the weekend um, newspaper media, you could be looking at millions of pairs of eyes on your content so the audience reach could be huge but actually you might say well it's it's regional audiences that I really want to hit or it's quite a niche uh, audience that I'm looking to reach you know it might be you know tens of thousands it might be 
you know, smaller numbers, but you get a more potent hit because they're the audience that are really, really interested in your offer or really, really need your offer. So audience reach is one of the benefits that PR opens up. And actually, you know, how else are we going to reach that number of people with our messaging? When you're reaching a big audience, traffic and sales starts to come through. So yes, there are elements come into play around conversion rate and how you can optimize it. But in essence, you're reaching a broader audience. What do we want to come from that is traffic and sales. And this might be the biggie, right? Let me know in the comments which one of these is standing out for you. Traffic and sales might be the biggie. Bottom line stuff, right? More eyes on our offer, more traffic on our website or more footfall into our store will then hopefully convert to more sales. So whilst it is you know, if you were to invest in social media ads, for example, you know, you'd be really granular on what is working, what is giving us a return on our investment, and you'll really be able to see the breakdown. Moving into the PR space, it's a little bit more subjective, but actually what we can start to do is start to track, you know, when did we get the hit, the hit in our sales? When did we get that peak in website traffic? You know, what piece of coverage does that relate to? Therefore, we can start to ascertain what is working for us in PR terms. So is traffic and sales the biggie for you? Is that what you're really wanting to achieve with, with something like PR? And brand credibility, number four. Okay, so this is what I started to touch on with advertising versus PR. The credibility and the kudos and the value that you can get from being mentioned in something like Red, The Times, The Telegraph. You know, Vogue is often, if you're in the sort of women's lifestyle space, that is a number one. Stylist, um, you know, even kind of more niche meet women's fitness, men's health. You know, what space are you wanting that endorsement from? Because that credibility that that lends to your brand is really, really powerful. Um, you know, it might be print media, it might be online credibility. It might be that you have won an award and you're able to stamp that logo on your website, you know, or kind of in relation to your brand. This is really kind of powerful stuff, and it's the subconscious selling power that you get from this. If you were, uh, let's say you're a, I don't know, life coach, right? And, and you, you know, you've got a competitor, and someone is asking both of you for quotes, they are kind of doing their research, you know, actually they, they really get on with both of you, as consumers, we're magpies, okay? We're drawn to the stuff that we recognize or that stands out or that looks a bit shiny, that looks a bit different, that looks a little bit wow. And having media credentials, you know, I've written for psychologies, I've written for Red, I've written for health and wellbeing. Being able to say something like that and to leverage the logo power on your website is what can sometimes tip the balance in your favor, okay? So brand credibility. Um, Emma says completely agree, sales are the end goal. Um, Annabelle says all three are important, absolutely, but traffic and sales ultimately is the end goal. And brand credibility is going to help you with sales, with the conversion, because that's something that you can leverage, obviously, to this broader audience that you're getting in front of, but to your current audience as well. They're going to see that credibility. They're going to they're going to go, well, you know, not everyone can get a feature in the Telegraph. Oh, she must be really good at what she does. Or, you know, this must be the best product to, to for me to invest in. OK, so that can help convert to sales as well. And then point five is, is one of my favourites. It, it is cost effective. OK, so we mentioned spending money on advertising, but in a magazine or an online platform, it's the good stuff that people are reading, the editorial stuff that people are consuming. That's free. OK, so when I say PR is cost effective, you might invest in training or you might outsource it to an agency. If you invest in a bit of training, and do it yourself the cost the cost is just the training because any coverage any results any pr wins that you get as a result of that training will be free i don't ever advocate having to pay to play right having to pay to place in a magazine to place online to place you know i think we can we can do a lot with influencers without um kind of paying to play in that respect it is about relationships it is about knowing the right way to do it and it is about kind of knowing how the media works, okay, and knowing what's possible. So does that make PR sound a little bit more enticing to some of us? That it's really, really cost effective. It's one of the one of the most cost effective ways to promote a business. So this is why I don't want PR to be out of reach for anyone, okay? It's not just for big budgets. It's not just for big business. 
So let me know if, let me know if that changes things for you. So I said, it comes down to being savvy. It comes down to understanding how the media works. Okay, so let's dive into this. There's a lot of content I want to get through, but you know, I want to keep the chat flowing. So the media, traditional media, okay, will work to lead times. So let's have a quick look at the breakdown of lead times. And this is really important because you need to know what a, what a journalist is working on at any given moment in order to be able to plan your PR activity. Now, there is a huge amount to this, you know, when you go into sort of proactive planning, media planning, PR strategy and all of that jazz. But let's give you, not give you an overview so that we can kind of just start to get clear in our minds about how it, how it all works. Um, so Rachel says, I've been approached by some magazines to showcase my product, but they always want me to pay to advertise. How do I get around this? So your advertising team are different to your editorial team. They don't necessarily speak, but the advertising team will sell adverts based on the type of editorial content that is in the magazine. So Rachel, you need to get yourself some editorial contacts. So the people writing the features, features writer, you know, shopping editor, um, you know, senior writer, staff writer, etc. go to them. If that magazine is one that speaks to your target market, pitch into the editorial team and kind of ignore the advertising team in the nicest possible way. Uh, Celia says, how do you find the editorial contacts? Remind me of that. Towards the end of the session, we're going to jump into actually sort of how to start positioning in the media. So um, I will try and remember that. But Celia, if I don't cover it, please do throw that question at me again. OK, so lead times. Monthly magazines will typically work on a three to six month lead time. OK, so the simplest kind of visualization of this is Christmas. Right. So Christmas is the sort of December issues. The monthly magazines will start working on this in July. OK, so come July, you'll see a lot around, you know, Christmas in July press days and what are John Lewis doing? What are MS doing? Journalists will be going to these press days. They'll be starting to get inspo for the gift guides for the Christmas content. OK, so then that that window between July, August, September, possibly early October, that's when they will be putting together all their Christmas content. OK, and that framework will apply throughout the year. So if you want to pitch into high summer, you want to start doing that at the beginning of the year. OK, so then weekly magazines. Typically two to 12 week lead time. OK, so the supplement magazines that come with the newspapers on the weekend, the, you know, weekly magazines, Women's Weekly, My Weekly, etc. They will work on this kind of lead time. OK, so come Christmas, they're probably going to be doing the bulk of their content in September, October. Right. So, again, that framework will apply for September. You know, it's kind of springtime to start pitching into them. And then online. I, I would sort of say online is, is immediate lead, really, but it's flexible. It can be hours, it can be weeks, okay? I've had a client that's been on the phone to someone at the Express um, to, you know, give quotes, give expert comment, and within two hours, that piece had been turned around and was online, okay? But equally, if something isn't really sort of timely, then it can sit on the back burner a little bit, you know, with the news content coming through. And it might be a few weeks before something goes online, say. So that's a typical breakdown in terms of lead times of the traditional media. So once you start to sort of put some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about into action, and you start to build your confidence. If you are wanting to tap into Christmas, for example, you want to make sure that you're ready for that come June, July. OK, and you want to be aware of lead time. So this is just a seed to sow at this stage. And with the media, such a broad spectrum of the media, I'm going to talk about avenues of visibility that go beyond traditional media. But even if we just look at traditional media, opportunities are pretty much endless. OK, so if you think about it regionally, we've got regional papers, magazines, online content. Nationally, we've got national papers, national magazines, national um, online content. We've got niche media, trade media and the various situations within that. We've got weekly, we've got monthly, we've got different sectors. Like there is so much scope. And within each of those, the, the content in the magazine, for example, you've got features, you've got product placement, you've got shopping pages, you've got interviews, you've got expert comment potential you've got q and a's you've got reviews any readable slice of a magazine or an online platform 
is an opportunity for you. If you feel like you could be a fit in that content, in theory, it's all possible, okay? So there is so much scope. And what I would ask for you to do is to pick up a magazine and you can post the question, right? Post the question on stories, ask your audience, what magazines do you read? What online platforms do you, you know, visit? Where do you consume your content? Where do you get inspiration? If you get a couple of media titles coming from that question, pick up a magazine or dump onto an online platform and just start to look at where you think you could fit within that content, okay? Because any of that is possible, right? So we're starting to build a picture of the, the, how the media works and what the possibilities are. And we're gonna look at how to access them in, 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 sort of towards the end of the session. But in the meantime, let's look at what does the media need, okay? What does the media need? What can we serve it with? Quite simply, the media needs you. There is a U-shaped hole in the media, okay? And we see it. I'm sure we see it with competitors, with other people in our field where, you know, maybe they've got a piece in a magazine feature or they're sharing some expert comment. Let me know in the chat, you know, hands up or thumbs up or whatever. Like, yeah, we've seen that happen. OK, have you seen anyone that you potentially work alongside, mix in the same circles with a com competitor, um, you know, a, a fellow professional in your field? Have you seen them placing in the media and have you wondered how that's possible? Right. We've had a couple of hands raised. There is a U-shaped hole. You can take up that space in the media. OK, if they're writing about someone else in your field, brilliant. It shows that they are interested in your offer, in your service, in your product. But ultimately, the media needs you. OK, the media relies on this kind of, you know, rotation of information. So journalists rely on PRs, on brands, on professionals, on experts in their field to feed them content, to feed them ideas, to feed them expertise to feed them imagery, to feed them quotes, to feed them content, interviews, etc. The list, as I said, it's endless, okay? Without you, they can't be doing their best job, okay? What do you need in order to take up this space? So I'm going to give you a really, really simplified version of, of my PR toolkit. Um, and this is something that I develop on in my domestic course, which um, can be one of the links that, that maybe we'll share post session. There are a number of different elements, but I'm gonna give you sort of top level. This is the absolute non-negotiables that you need if you want to start placing in the media. Okay, so first up, you need high resolution images of yourself, of your offer or your product. Let me know in the chat, hands up, who has the high res images, okay? So what kind of imagery do you want? Um, oh, we're getting a lot of hands raised. Brilliant. Love it. Epic. Well done. A star students. Brilliant. So cut out imagery. If you are a product business, you need cut out imagery and you've probably already got that for your website, but you need to put it in your toolkit. OK, so ideally what you would have is a folder on Google Drive or Dropbox where you can drop in well labeled cut out images. OK, so you want your image labeled with the product name, with the price and with your website, ideally. So that if your image gets kind of parted from your informational email, a journalist can still use it. They've got all the information that they need. OK, so high resolution cut out photography is essential for product based coverage. This would often mean typically I'm not a techie, but a minimum of 300 DPI and something about hugging pixels. Um, but this will take it to sort of one megabyte plus. Without that, you will really, really struggle. There's kind of no point in you even approaching PR coverage without that in your toolkit if you are a product business okay so here are a few examples it is simply cut out of the product on a white background okay can we tick that off for a product business i hope so lifestyle imagery again if you're a product business but this also starts to move into sort of service-based terrain also is can you demonstrate your service in process. So if you're an interior designer, you would be able to curate some beautiful lifestyle images. If you are um, a you know, beautician or you're working in the beauty space, I'm sure you've got some great imagery of your space, of your salon, maybe of your work. Lifestyle imagery is the kind of extra for product coverage, 
Um, it's something that can really sell your offer, um, can really sell your concept. And actually, typically, try, and, try not to, to digress too much, but this is quite a nice um, thing to consider is typically magazines, you know, previously, particularly pre-COVID, but, you know, even, even pre that, you know, budgets, before budgets started getting shaved, magazines would do a lot of the photography in-house so they would call in samples and samples are an element of a PR toolkit as well if you're a product-based business but we're not going to cover that too much today they would call in samples they would shoot in-house okay even if they weren't shooting in-house they would still be calling in product cutout imagery and they might supplement with their own styled lifestyle imagery what is happening more and more so typically it might be that you know sort of 90 percent of what you would send would be cutouts and the magazine would do the rest typically what we're seeing now is magazines calling in more lifestyle imagery to supplement the product cutouts on a page and give the page a bit more life they're not shooting in-house as much so they're relying on you to give that editorial feel with your lifestyle imagery so I would say it's now probably more sort of 70 30 even 60 40 potentially split product cutouts aren't going anywhere but if you can weave a bit of your lifestyle imagery in there then it just increases your chances of coverage okay so a couple of examples of lifestyle imagery um, so let me come to a couple of the comments. Branding photo shoot, definitely recommended. Professional photography is a game changer. Absolutely. Across your business and across however you promote your business, as well as PR, it is such a valuable investment. Um, we sell garden rooms, lifestyle imagery, definitely lifestyle imagery. Sell the concept, okay? Sell the sort of lifestyle of, of what you're offering. Um, what can you do if you have high-res photos, but no cutouts, will they not take them? Celine, keep whatever high-res photos you've got in your toolkit because they are a great supplement to cutouts. If you can, um, and I would always advocate getting cutouts shot as cutouts by a studio, but there are tools that you can use online to turn, if a product is fairly static in a setting, to turn a simple photo into a cutout. So maybe that's something to explore in the interim before you know your next range and factoring in cutouts into your photography budget for, for the next range, for example. So I hope that, I hope that helps. And I would advocate that every single brand owner has profile images, has some kind of headshot. Um, on that previous point, Jason says, um, Adobe Express highly recommended for that kind of process when it comes to cutouts, et cetera. So profile images, high resolution profile headshots, they will really elevate your offer as a brand owner okay so again 300 dpi high resolution high quality essential if you're promoting a service business but also as i said a founder of any business this is really really valuable to have in your toolkit if you're pitching yourself as a creative um as a business owner and um you know, a uh, magazine comes back and says, yeah, we'd love to do an interview with you. Can you answer these questions? Can you send us a couple of headshots to sort of pad out the visual? If you haven't got them, you're on the back foot. With any of these elements, if you have started the process and a journalist is asking for them and you haven't got them to handle to be able to deliver them, you're on the back foot. They're not going to wait for you. They're going to give that space to someone else. OK, headshots are really powerful, even if you were guesting on a podcast. The first thing that podcast host or producer is going to ask you for is, oh, have you got a headshot you can share for the promo graphic? Um, if you're doing a session like this, right, like me delivering this, yeah, have you got have you got a headshot we can use to promote it or, you know, a headshot we can use on the sign up page? The more you start to position yourself, the more you start to push out their PR wise, you will be asked for this kind of photography. Um, on the point of cutouts, uh, Sophie says I've used Canva to make cutouts. Um, Emma asks, um, has anyone got any recommendations for business headshots? We'll, we'll try and share a couple of recommendations for you, Emma. But there might be photographers on this session. Um, if you're a photographer and you do headshots, then feel free to jump into the chat and um, tell everyone how they can connect with you. OK, so imagery is a key, key, key component of your toolkit. What you also need is content. You need to know what you're there to talk about. You know, what can you share? What expertise, what value can you share with the media? And I would just advocate kind of just brainstorming some talking topics, okay? 
because if you can email a journalist with a few key bullet points that says I can talk about X, Y, Z and, you know, bish bash bosh for want of a better better phrase um but you know this is the kind of stuff that i can talk on that i can share my expertise on what what relevant what what resonates you know it's kind of posing that question this is what i can offer to you please let me know if any of these sound like a fit for you brainstorm it out so think about your um topics what can you cover and actually if something sounds like quite a chunky topic how can you break it down even further so if you were brainstorming a list of blog ideas, for example, similar type of thing. What key talking points do you cover on social media? What FAQs do you, do you kind of get coming to you? Bullet point some content and actually have quite a long list if possible, because the ideas that you might send to women's fitness, for example, might be slightly different to the ideas that you might send to Prima, for example. They might all be fitness related, but there'll be a, an angle maybe geared towards the over 60s or over 50s for Prima, but they'll be for a kind of, you know, maybe kind of higher octane fitness audience for women's fitness, for example. OK, so list out those content elements. And ultimately, you need a product or a service to sell or a story to tell. That is your impetus for getting into the media. OK, so this is really top line, top level basic intro to PR toolkit um, but it's just those key things that you need to make sure that you are on top of so where can you PR yourself so we've talked about traditional media there's a huge amount of space in the traditional media but that might feel like a big thing to tackle okay that might that might just feel a little bit distant um, what can we do in the meantime OK, what other options are there available? And I would advocate, you know, even if you're tapping into the media and you're kind of going big with your PR, don't forget all of these other options. OK, so we have got media on here on these avenues of visibility. Social media. Are you taking off social media? I'm guessing so. In which case, bingo, you're doing your own PR. Email marketing. Do you send a newsletter? Do you use your email to promote your services or to share value? Blogging. You know, there's there's a big conversation here. Is blogging dead? Who blogs anymore? Who reads blogs? But actually, we are seeing, you know, with the rise of Substack, what is Substack? It's essentially a kind of a blog model, isn't it? So, you know, this kind of content provision just keeps changing. It keeps shifting and we're stepping. We're seeing a lot of the influencers and the bloggers and the vloggers that were blogging, you know, back in the day, so 10, 15 years ago, are going back to those spaces because it's a different way of storytelling. Um, I would advocate that anyone in business, any business owner has a blog on their website where they can share value, where they can share context, where they can demo their product or demo their service, where they can deliver a point of education for their audience. It will then also give you a grounding for what would become guest articles you know when you start stepping into the media and you're writing guest articles that's great if you if you are blogging regularly you have got a great grounding to start delivering guest articles and guest content to the media um question come through do you recommend mailchimp over others i use mailchimp i'm not sure that it's the best um i've heard good things about flowdesk um mixed bag when it comes to mail light I think just do a little bit of research and just see what kind of feels like the best uh fit for you so we've got a couple of photography recommendations on there so check out the chat um networking are you networking enough online offline it's a great way to, to sort of personally PR yourself you never know who's going to be in the room you never know who you're going to meet as an advocate who is going to be interested in you who might then support you or give you an opportunity or you know push you when you're not there so networking is hugely powerful. SEO is obviously a whole topic in and of itself. Search engine optimization. It's essentially online PR. OK, how can you make your website work harder for you? How can you make your online presence work harder for you? And tapping into online PR, um, you know, kind of digital PR, tapping into websites, other people's blogs, online platforms is great for your SEO. Media. Yes, we've covered podcasting. Guesting on podcasts is a super duper, super duper way to start to get more well, visible um, as such. But it's it's a great way to sort of lean in to start telling your story a little bit more, start sharing your expertise, 
and kind of easing into something like speaking. So like I'm doing here, you know, I'm presenting on my expertise, I'm sharing some of my knowledge and, you know, there's a huge amount of scope and potential for, for opportunities like this, but also maybe speaking in networking events. Or can you imagine speaking at trade shows? It's something I would never have dreamed of you know, 10 years ago, but it's something that I now do regularly. It can open up great ways to promote yourself, but it can also become an income stream. OK, so that's a really exciting one. I feel like if I can do it, trust me, trust me, anyone can. Um, collaboration, brilliant way to tap into other people's warm audiences. You might be doing some of that already, but it might be a really nice starting point to just explore. OK, just kind of baby steps. Influencers and celebrities, again, it's something that people go, oh, no, you know, it's not worked for me or that's not the right fit for my business. You know, by influencers, it can be anyone with influence in your industry. OK, if you feel that an endorsement or a recommendation from an influential person in your space is going to benefit you, then that's your influencer. OK, it doesn't have to be kind of, you know, sassy Instagram starlets or, you know, TikTokers. OK, find the influencers that feel like a fit for you, OK, that will champion you and that you'll be able to leverage. Um, awards, brilliant. I would advocate that anyone work this into their PR strategy and PR output. Awards are great to nominate yourself for. If you have to be nominated, then ask, you know, ask the people around you. OK, ask your audience, can you nominate me for, for this award? It's a brilliant point of credibility. It's a brilliant way to network. It's a great way to um, you know, meet others that you might want to collaborate with, to be able to say that you're an award-winning business owner or an award-winning expert. Really, really powerful and really just quite a fun avenue to explore. Um, Rachel says that she has her first trade show in May, London Craft Week, bit nervous. Any tips for meeting trade buyers? If anyone in the space has got any tips as to what works for them, please, please jump on that. Um, I think, you know, what keeps coming through for me is just sort of authenticity. It's being prepared, knowing your staff, you know, and you do know your staff, right? No one knows your offer better than you. If you are exhibiting, then you need to have your numbers clear. You need to have all your kind of stock information clear. Be prepared also to document everything so that you can do proper follow-up. But, you know, you are going into that space because you know your staff and, and you know your business and you want to advocate for that. So trust in that. Um, Kim says awards are helpful to gain awareness and be recognised in your field. Absolutely. And if we're talking about credibility, if we're talking about elevating, and I don't like the word competitors, but you know other people in your field, if we're talking about elevating kind of alongside them or above them, then awards can play a great role in that. OK, so there's a lot there, right? what is appealing to you let me know in the chat which of those sounds like either you feel like you're nailing it already or yeah okay this could be a good starting point for me let me know in the chat how this is all sitting okay so what do we do if we want to get started conscious of time keep checking time i want to make sure that there's time for questions but how do we get started let me know in the chat what what you feel is important for you so we want to think about our positioning okay we want to think about what what we stand for what we want you know okay so what do you stand for what do you do what do you do I don't know what that doesn't make sense to me but what do you do right who's your ideal client how will you serve your audience what do you want to deliver to them what value we're going to be sharing where do you need to be seen so ultimately this is about where you are and how you want to communicate that what audience you want to reach and, and communicate to OK, so establishing this is really important before you do any PR activity is getting a toolkit and getting your positioning, because once you know this, you know that you're going to be speaking to the right people. OK, so Sharon says we'd love to find a podcast. Rachel says we'd love to do podcasts. It's brilliant. You know, ask if you know someone who has a podcast, ask them, you know, are you looking for guests? Is it possible that I can come on and share my story or my expertise? Uh, Virginia says blogging, regular social media posting to start with, brilliant starting point, love it, and you can build from there, you know, guest articles, that kind of thing. Um, keep those comments coming through in the chat. So thinking about your positioning, you can't sell without reaching or building an audience to sell to, okay? So PR is going to help you build an audience, but it will also give you access to leverage the audience of others. So as we mentioned with collaboration, for example, kind of leveraging the power of other people's warm audiences 
okay it's really really powerful so once you start to picture where you are and kind of what you're wanting to achieve and how you're going to do that is you can think about getting started so just throwing another question out there is there anything that has held you back from starting or held you back from approaching PR let me know let me know if it's been a bit of a mm, mm, I feel like I need to do it but I'm not sure where or how to get started what has held you back what has stopped you kind of moving forward in that space is it perceived cost which we've hopefully debunked um is it you know lack of time is it uh, that you're maybe not not feeling enough not feeling experienced enough not feeling like you've been in the game long enough you know there's always someone that is more experienced or more expert or has been doing it longer but that doesn't undermine your value that you have to bring to the table okay remember there's that u-shaped hole in the media um you know what what is it lack of confidence are you embarrassed is there an ick like oh can't possibly you know pr myself like oh you know i don't have the confidence to do that what what is it so lack of inspiration not sure what to say time planning money confidence confidence to speak in front of others um struggle to find contacts no replying feel a bit soul destroyed lack of confidence lack of time um my role play center hasn't opened yet i'm on social media but you know worried about doing too much rachel you can you can start to pr yourself and actually if you want a few specific pointers on that then do pop me a message um socially awkward i'm socially awkward i am an anxious introvert um so if you know if I can do it, we can all push through, we can we can go for it. No idea what types of mags or publications will be interested. Um, BBC interest, love it, this is fantastic. Um, agree with Marianne, you send out emails to the various journalists and no replies. Okay, so hopefully I'm gonna give you a couple of hacks to, to try and beat the system in that respect. Time investment, I got a few articles last year, but it took me hundreds of emails. So time is a big one confidence is a big one on the confidence factor is confidence is a muscle okay it's something that we can work on the more you do this the easier it will start to become and in terms of time you know i want to make this as time efficient and as and effective as possible okay so thank you for sharing all those points and i think in terms of how to find your audience or kind of where you know i don't know where to be approaching is again, ask your social media following, put a question box in your stories. What magazines are you reading? What online platforms are you looking at? What influencers are you following? Use that intel and that data to give yourself a few starting points, okay? And just start reading through those magazines, start to get familiar with those spaces. So let's look at some easy starting points in those broader avenues of visibility before we just touch on the media and how to really sort of um, make your mark and, and, and get involved. Um, so let me know which of these feels like a fit, which of these feels doable. Um, let me know in the comments. So as I mentioned, when a couple of the comments were saying, you know, I want to get into podcasts. Do you know someone with a podcast that you can guest on? As is the case with a lot of the PR stuff, if you don't ask, you don't get, okay? what is the harm in asking the question if someone you know or a friend of a friend or you know you can get someone to play matchmaker with a podcast that you're aware of ask the question are you lining up interviews for your next series you know are you looking for someone in my line of work to interview you know I'm, I'm really happy to share my story I'm really happy to share my expertise here are a couple of topics that I thought might fit for the podcast and your audience there is no harm in asking that question and it could give you a really ideal starting point. Okay, so does this sound doable? I hope so. And actually, when you're going into anything like this and also with the media and building relationships is what can you offer? What value can you offer to that title, to that podcast and ultimately to that audience, that listenership, that readership, etc.? cetera? Um, should your podcast match the host's theme? So should your pitch match the theme of the podcast is that what you mean Sharon I would always tailor any pitch 
any inquiry, tailor it. Show that you know the title or the podcast that you're pitching to, that you know what type of content is going to be a fit and that you get the impression that, you know, what you're offering could be something that their audience are going to be interested in, okay? Do you know someone, oh, we've done that, uh, nominate yourself for an award. So as I said, awards are amazing, okay? They're a brilliantly fun way to get visible and kind of push yourself out there. So can you nominate yourself for an award? There are a lot of ones that are out there that are kind of um, either free or really low cost. Um, Gift of the year is a great one if you're a product business. Um, the small awards is a fantastic one for small businesses. There's a lot in the kind of entrepreneurship space. Um, get involved don't be shy and actually writing an award entry is a great way to really kind of validate and affirm what you've achieved and and you know what you've achieved to get to this point it's a very very um heartening uh, way to give yourself a boost also find a like-minded business to collaborate with right no brainer tap into other people's warm audiences is this something that you feel is doable? Are you going to nominate yourself for an award? I'm setting these little challenges, okay? Let me know what you are wanting to achieve. Bit of accountability in this space. And also get out networking, okay? Offer to deliver some content or to deliver a little um, speech or a little boost, you know, maybe a short workshop or a little webinar or a little Q&A session. What can you offer to those spaces in which you network, whether that's online or offline? OK, that's an easy one to start to ease into. All right. Virginia says awards are a good one. I wrote awards entries for my former employee. They were finalists and winners at least three times. Amazing. Virginia, can you do that for yourself? Um, Turan, uh, what are your views on awards at SME Business Awards? There's no nomination. They just pick you at random. And I would say that there's not a huge amount of value in those that you say, oh, you've you've won this award, you know, to claim your trophy and your space in the magazine. It'll just cost 500 pounds. Or I would say there's not a huge amount of value in that. I would say curate what you apply for and then leverage it should you be shortlisted. OK, start a blog. You know, yes, it's an investment of time, but, um, you know, is it necessary? Do you feel like you need to educate your audience? Maybe you can offer a guest blog for other business owners or other content platforms. Um, so, you know, can, can is that a space for you to start getting into? Um, Virginia says, yes, I need to, don't I? If I can do it for a previous employer, I can do it for myself. Yes, absolutely. Advocate for yourself. Nominate yourself. Maggie's just nominated herself. Um, or one of her therapy llamas for a BBC Make a Difference Animal Awards. Amazing, brilliant, well done. Regional Business Awards are a great one to, to enter as well. So yeah, absolutely. FSB, um, Regional Awards, there's all sorts. Just a simple Google. Um, there is also a website. I think it is just awardslist.co.uk or awards-list.co.uk. Challenge yourself to show up more on your social media platforms. That's a really simple one that I think quite often a lot of us will need to kind of give that extra layer of accountability okay we need to show up um on our platforms a little bit more we need to challenge ourselves to be a bit more present um right let's just take that tick tick it off for all of us okay that that is a that is the point of accountability so brief note as to how and where you can be sharing your expertise do you feel like you're doing that enough do you feel like you're sharing enough value are you doing that on social media? Can you be delivering webinars, workshops and talks where possible? Can you be appearing on podcasts? Can you look at guest blogging? Can you start writing an ebook or, or a book even? Well, email newsletter. Can you be delivering your content and your value that way? That way? Where else? Where else can you be delivering your expertise? Because any one of these spaces could be spotted by a journalist, by an influencer, by someone that can give you an opportunity. I've had you know like some of my biggest opportunities um working with domestica working with bbc uh getting my first gig speaking at top draw they have all come from my presence on social media and in other spaces okay there are people that are ready and waiting to give you great opportunities if you continually push yourself out there okay so this is about blitzing those other avenues of visibility and hopefully you've got some ideas how's everyone taken few tangible starting points from those lists let me know Celia wants to write a book don't know where to start 
um, Celia, pop me a message and we, we can dive into that. When you're ready to move into the media, here are some top tips. So you want to start getting familiar with the titles that your audience are reading and consuming, okay? I've already said, ask that question on social media, then use that data, then start doing a bit of research, okay? Get familiar. Where can you fit with your content, with your value, with your offer? Where will you sit in that space, okay? Start to visualize it. If you're crowbarring it in, it's not right for you, okay? It's got to feel like you can be a natural fit. So if you are in the fitness and well-being space, health and well-being, women's fitness, women's health, okay? If you are a uh, product for you know, my male beauty, men's health, GQ, attitude, etc. Where can you sit? Get your assets ready, that kind of top line toolkit, imagery, content and offer. Nail those. And then starting points. Can you start to approach independent media titles such as The Homeworker, Brand You? Can you work with Small Business Britain to deliver a webinar to their audience? Look at these accessible starting points to start to build your confidence, okay? Pitch some ideas. These are the topics I could talk on. These are some articles that I might, you know, that I could write. What themes are you working on? What plans have you got coming up? Is there anything here that could be a fit? Okay, as I said, just ask the question, what's the worst that can happen? And then in terms of being time efficient, speaking of really conscious of the time, um, in terms of being time efficient, okay, now, yes, we can be proactive with our outreach. Yes, we want to look for contacts. Yes, we want to send emails. I would advocate doing that alongside, but a really, really time effective way to do it is to leverage the power of media media alerts okay real time media opportunities from journalists from producers from stylists etc that are looking for you okay because there is that u-shaped hole right so uh follow the hashtag journo request on x can any of us really call it x i still call it twitter that hashtag is utilized by as I said, journalists, producers, stylists, all sorts of people working in the media that are looking for comment, imagery, information, any specific thing that will help them write their feature, complete their article, you know, hand in that interview. So on Journal Request, you'll get all sorts. You'll get um, people from, you know, BBC shows, from like Jeremy Vine's show. Um, I've seen like Woman and Home, The Guardian, all sorts of opportunities it's free okay so I would advocate checking in daily twice a day if possible can you find anything that feels like a fit there'll be maybe a week right we'll go by and there's nothing here that's a fit but for that one opportunity that pops up where you can start the conversation with a journalist and potentially will lead to coverage it is so worth it trust me it is worth just spending that time scanning okay and beyond that Harrow, help a reporter out. It's quite a US centric um, free platform that you can utilize for media alerts, but there are paid for platforms also. So things like press plugs, where you can select your um, sort of industry, you can select your niche, uh, press loft, response source. There are media alerts providers out there, like some of them will start to get a bit expensive. Um, but essentially, if you can look for a media alerts provider, that feels like a fit for you you can do some trials you know see what works as fashion monitor is another one diary directory see what works for you but being able to respond in real time to what a journalist is looking for exponentially increases your chances of coverage of success you know so gone are the days where you send 100 emails and you're waiting on at least one response media alerts and tapping into hashtag journal request on twitter at the very least is the easiest way to tap into the media okay and to build the starting points of media success in addition to all the other avenue visibilities right keep in mind pr is about communication about building relationships anything and everything could be a pr opportunity okay and they could be hiding anywhere be efficient be helpful in any and every exchange with a journalist remember it's like offering a buffet oh these are all the things i can talk about you know what feels like the best fit for you let's work on something together 
How helpful can you be? Don't become despondent if you don't get a response or things don't take off straight away, as, as some of the comments have alluded to. Is it's easy for me to say, but trust me, if you go in on the media alerts angle, start to be responsive to things, explore other avenues of visibility to build your confidence and build your presence in the meantime, then everything else will start to follow. OK, it really is a snowball effect once you start to put, push yourself out there. So every step, however small it might feel, is forward progress, is getting you in front of your audience and is building towards PR success. So hopefully I've given you a bit of a full gamut of PR, what it is, how it works, how you can start to get into the media, but also how you can leverage the other avenues of visibility that are out there as well. And hopefully you can feel a little bit more confident in approaching it now. Um, so hopefully we've got some questions. I have seen the Q&A um, box kind of popping off a little bit. What have we got? Fiona, amazing. Thank you so much. That water stop tour. There was so much great information there. Um, so much love for you in the chat as well, which I'm liking them, um, the little uh, reactions that keep coming up. Um, so thank you so much for spending this past hour with us. Um, we've got about five minutes for questions. So I'm going to dive straight in. Um, you've answered loads that have already come up in the chat. So we haven't got too, too many to go through. Um, the first one I wanted to mention, which was actually sent before uh, the webinar today, and I think it's a super um, interesting topic. Um, so this lady is a healthcare provider in a regulated profession, and there are very specific limitations of what she can say and help with. Um, if she's talking about a topic that sits outside of these claims, it's OK. But if she's misquoted or misrepresented, she could be subject to an investigation. So are there ways that she can get more final editorial control over what is said and printed in the final press release? Um, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so it, it, it's it's something that is quite relevant and, and important to, you know, various sort of professionals. I would say that, you know, final, final edit lies with an editor. OK, so you can work with a journalist on the content. Um, you can be quite clear about what you share. Um, if you're writing guest articles, then you know exactly what you're providing and it will change very little um, through the editorial process. Final edit does lie with an editor, especially even if you've potentially had the opportunity to sign off on an article, the headline might be out of your control um, and it might not be easily changed. Some features will give you final sign off, final approval, especially if there's something that you're being paid for, but tends to be more real life stories in, in that sense. But what I would say is set yourself a framework in terms of key terms, um, keywords, what you're able to say, what your remit is use simple language wherever possible what you want to try and avoid in this scenario is any interpretation or kind of um, misrepresentation by a journalist if you can use simple language and give context it minimizes the risk of a journalist then kind of trying to interpret what you're saying um, I would also say kind of tiptoe into it okay so prioritize maybe building relationships with perhaps freelancers or kind of journalists that, that, that feel accessible, start to follow them on social media, start to interact with them so that, you know, they can understand where you're coming from and your priorities um, and kind of be understanding of that. But also remember that journalists, you know, they have, they have integrity, a lot of them, and they will respect your boundaries, even if they can't give you authoritative final sign off and um, I would also say that you know something to consider having is perhaps something like professional indemnity insurance um you know I know it doesn't necessarily kind of cover or prevent um you know the kind of investigation side of things but it's maybe again just kind of how do we layer up a bit of a security blanket around you um but yeah I'm happy you know anything kind of more in depth I'm happy to 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 take it onto email and equally um, any other questions that we don't get to today, I'm happy to, to take it onto email. Amazing, thank you. Um, there is a question here uh, for your contact details. I can see your um, social media app is on screen. Um, if you're happy to, please do share your contact uh, in the chat, Fiona. If not, please do connect um, with Fiona or Boss Your PR, which is on screen at the moment. Um, just on that point, um, 
someone's put into the Q and A their experience about um, they got paid for um, their story to be published and lots of other local newspapers rewrote the story and um, got loads of the facts completely wrong. Um, so she has also asked if you've got any tips to have a better experience as she ventures into this again. Um, I'm thinking maybe lots of the same tips you just mentioned, but I thought it was quite an interesting. Yeah, it is point. interesting and it is something that, you know, I do come across and it is it is difficult, right? Because once our story is out there, we can't control how well other people retell it. Mm-hmm. If there are factual errors, then it can be a case that, you know, you can get in touch with the journalist that has written the article and ask for amends. Um, I would say that once the story is out there, it, there's not a huge amount you can do to limit the circulation of it more broadly. I would say that perhaps a kind of combat to that is, you know, then looking at sort of generating additional PR on your own terms that maybe kind of drowns out some of the noise that has gone previously it sort of tends to be the most um, sort of constructive way to, to take control of a narrative. Amazing, thank you. Um, just final point here, um, Celia has said, how do you find editorial contacts? I think you spoke through that a few slides back, um, but yeah, if there's any more tips around. Yeah, that, um, sure. so there's a few starting points, okay? So getting onto the media alerts thing is, is one. Um, Twitter is great for, sorry, X is great for, you know, journalists sort of sit on on Twitter, right? That's that's their space. It's a very kind of news led. There's an immediacy to it. It's very fast paced and quick moving. They will have quite often their contact information on their Twitter profile. So if you're reading a magazine and you're sort of dotting down a few names, jump onto Twitter, see if you can contact them uh, via the information there. Um, There is a kind of masthead page uh, with contact information quite often in most magazines. Um, if there's not specific email addresses, then there's nothing to stop you finding the switchboard and sort of seeing if you can get through to someone that can give you the best email contact. Um, I would try and avoid sort of diving into Instagram DMs. Um, you know, oh, what's the best, uh, the best way to pitch to you? I would keep it on Twitter if you can. Also, some of these journalists will have their own websites. So it's just a case of a a little Google jobby. Um, There are databases and things that you can subscribe to uh, if you really want to sort of get serious about kind of doing this on more scale. But that would be an investment. And there's a few sort of savvy little tricks that that you can use to to find contact information prior to, to investing. Amazing. Thank you. Um, I know we've come to the end of the hour now, so we are going to have to wrap up. Um, We've got a few questions about the recording. Um, Don't worry, you will be receiving it in your email box. Um, Actually got a question here about um, who to contact if you want to be considered as a webinar host. Um, You can just email us at hello at smallbusinessbritain.uk. As I said, we'll be sending you the recording, so you will have the email in your email box, so no need to write that down. Um, Just wait for our email to come through. Um, Fiona, thank you so, so much for today. I really enjoyed it myself and everyone else has who's joined. I um, want to say massive thank you to BT for continuing to partner with us on these sessions. I know they're super helpful for all of you small businesses out there. Um, we'll be back with more sessions, so do keep an eye on our emails um, to sign up for those. Fiona, any final words before we wrap up today? I don't think so. Just I hope that everyone has taken something from that, that they can start to action so that they can get closer to that PR success that is absolutely achievable and possible and doable. Amazing. Thank you so much. We've been inspired and ready to go on this Tuesday morning. And thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you very soon. Thank you.